I've killed many, many plants in all my years of gardening. But hey, as someone once said, there are no gardening mistakes, only experiments. We've all killed a few plants in our time. And it happens mainly due to two reasons. Number one is because life gets in the way and that's totally normal. But number two is because when we're starting out with plants, we tend to buy them based on how they look, which is only fair because we want them to look nice in our homes. But there lies the problem. When we buy plants purely based on their aesthetics, we sometimes end up bringing home a plant that is maybe a little more high maintenance than we have the time or the energy for. And because we don't know enough about the variety we are buying, we end up giving them the wrong cultural conditions like the wrong soil, water or light. The secret to not killing our plants often lies in finding the right variety. In this first episode of 5 and 5, my series in which I tell you 5 awesome plant things in 5 minutes, I'll be showing you my top 5 plants that are perfect for beginners or for those who just can't understand why their plants die. So let's jump right in. Hi, I'm Trisha, a writer and a gardener and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see my videos every single week. Now let's begin. My first plant is the Skindapsis. This variety here is the Skindapsis pictus exotica and over the years it's become my favorite house plant. It's a sturdy plant with a beautiful variegation and a glossy sheen. It tolerates low light pretty well but will of course grow much bigger in bright indirect light. This plant is the ultimate trooper. I've had it for over three years now and it's only grown non-stop. This plant is also quite pest resistant, can grow in any kind of soil and can be grown in a moss pole or in a hanging basket or even in jugs of water. So if you're looking for a plant that's both pretty and sturdy, this is the plant for you. My second plant is an obvious one. It's the Dracaena trifasciata, commonly known as snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue. Because as one story goes, just like a mother-in-law, once she gets going, she never stops. This is hands down the best plant for people who have busy schedules or for the absent-minded because it can go weeks without water and kind of thrives on neglect. The plant has thick succulent-like leaves which indicates that it is good at retaining water. Truth be told, I've sometimes forgotten to water this plant for more than a month and a half and it's given me no trouble. Maybe you shouldn't push it to those extremes. Just water it when the topsoil is bone dry. The snake plant also tolerates low light better than most other house plants out there and can in fact remain in the darker spots of your home for longer durations without any tantrums. But I'd suggest not keeping it in extremely low light for too long because all plants need light. If you want to know more about the right light conditions for your house plants, do check out this video I made explaining in detail the kind of light our indoor plants love and hate. My third plant is one I don't often find recommended and it's unfortunate because it's a fantastic plant. It's the Kalanchoe Blosfeldiana, commonly known as Flaming Katie. This plant grows into a dense bush which produces tiny red flowers in the cooler months. What's great about this plant is that it's super easy to propagate. All you need to do is take one or two of these leaves and stick it into a pot with some regular garden soil and it will take root in no time. So if you want a plant that's sturdy, is fairly pest resistant and also produces lovely flowers in the cooler months, this is the plant for you. Plant number four is the Aglonema. To me, Aglonemas are like the Labradors of the houseplant world. They're cheery, fuss-free plants that tolerate low light and even poor soils pretty well. They're also very pest resistant and will rarely give you any trouble. I'll only caution you to water it when the topsoil is dry. These plants come in a variety of colors and patterns which will leave you spoiled for choice. Just remember that if the plant you choose has very pigmented or brightly colored leaves, it will need more light than the greener varieties. Our last plant is the Monstera spurperu. It also has fleshy, thick leaves and a robust nature, but unlike its more glamorous cousin, the Monstera deliciosa, the Monstera spurperu grows very quickly and can fill a pot in no time. 
it does well in low light conditions and any kind of soil just water it when the soil is dry you can either grow this in a hanging pot like i have or allow it to climb up a moss pole i've had this plant for over three years now and i've had zero pest problems or any other problems with it whatsoever so if you're looking for a plant that grows very quickly has zero pest problems and also has a lovely lush tropical feel go out and get the monstera spurperu so that's it from me today i hope this video has encouraged you to get a few plants home and have fun with them if you like this video do hit that subscribe button so i can keep making these videos for you if you want to catch me on instagram you can follow me on my handle here but last but not the least, if you want me to make a video about something specific related to plant care, do leave your ideas in the comments below and I'll definitely give it a go. Bye folks!